Welcome to TRS Clips, where you'll find happiness through your own curiosity. Let's talk about fatty liver. Why do they call it fatty liver? Is it just because the liver is getting damaged? Or is there a layer of fat deposited on the liver? Why does the word fatty even come? Yeah, so um, there are different causes for fat to get deposited inside the liver. So when I mean inside the liver, it's actually inside the liver cell. Mm. So the liver is made up of different types of cells. So this is also something very interesting because there are no organs as complex as the liver. So, I mean, if some, if I ask somebody who, which is the most complex organ that you can think of, they'll say the brain because brain is so complex, right? But brain has only two types of cells. That's it. Two types of cells make up the whole brain. Look at the heart. Four types of cells make up the whole heart. But look at the liver. Five types of cells make up the liver. And that those are primary types. And there are so many different types of it. And all in all, there are like three, 30 billion cells in the liver. 30 billion cells that make up 1.5 kilogram. So the liver is so complex. And the most common cell that you find in the liver is known as a hepatocyte, which is the liver cell, what we call as liver cell. Now, when you say fatty liver, it's basically lipids in droplet forms getting deposited inside the liver cell, mm. you know, around the nucleus within the cell. So that's a fatty liver. And when that happens, and more than about, you know, 5% of these uh, liver cells are uh, affected by this droplet uh, deposition, then we call it as a fatty liver because mm -hmm. we see that on ultrasound. So when you do a simple scan, you can actually see the liver is grade one, grade two, grade three fatty. Those are patterns of deposition. Patterns of damage? Patterns of deposition of the fat. But does that mean also damage? No, it doesn't mean. So when, when you, for us to call it damage, that lipid should cause inflammation within the liver cell. So that is known as fatty liver disease. So when you just see fatty liver on an ultrasound, that's just fatty liver. That is an ultrasound or radi radiological fatty liver. Now you look at the liver function test. Now if you see your liver function test, there are various parameters. There is total bilirubin. There is direct bilirubin. There is a component known as AST, ALT, which are liver enzymes. SGOT, SGPT. You can actually look at the liver function profile and see that and GGT, alkaline phosphatase, these are all liver enzymes. Now, if these enzymes are high, especially the AST and ALT, that means there is some damage happening to the liver cell. So then we call it as fatty liver disease or steatohepatitis. Okay. So the first stage is just deposition of fat around the nucleus. Yeah. And at some point, if you don't control your lifestyle or if the disease you're going through goes out of hand, yeah. then that same deposited fat causes inflammation. Exactly. And then that inflammation is what is referred to as the disease yeah, exactly. part of it. Now, the inflammation does something else in between. Now, this is the most important part because just the inflammation is to some extent fine, easily reversible. But sometimes the inflammation actually damages the liver cell so that the liver cells actually die. And in their position, you get scars. So you have scarring where the liver cell was damaged. So that is known as fibrosis mm. in, in technical term. Mm. So you can have steatohepatitis with fibrosis, which means not just the fat deposition or the inflammation. Now your liver is getting scarred. And when that scarring goes beyond a particular point, so the scarring is uh, considered as F0, where there is no scarring, that is no fibrosis, F1, which is an F2, which is early fibrosis, F3, which is advanced fibrosis, F4, which is what we call as cirrhosis. So that is that 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 range of scarring is also important. So it goes above F2, that becomes significant scarring, and you have a high chance of developing cirrhosis. So this much is there to fatty liver. Got it. Okay. So I think cirrhosis is one of the words that everyone commonly knows. And I'll be very like raw and honest here with you. Usually people look at say neuroscience, neurology, or cardiac related stuff as the most common and also probably put diabetes into that yeah. situation yeah. Uh, into this conversation people look at heart brain yeah. and diabetes as the most common medical problems in my eyes i believe india is going through a bit of a liver problem on a mass scale uh, because of our dietary habits because of alcohol consumption increasing in our country right uh, there's two questions for you firstly from an india perspective Am I saying the right thing? And secondly, in your experience as a liver doctor, have you seen an increase in the number of cases? Because I remember, I don't know whether it was your tweet or I'd read this somewhere that uh, there's a lot of people in their late 20s and early 30s also going through liver disease, yes. which doesn't make sense to me. But then what I will say is I'm a 30 year old man. I've grown up with other guys my age. I'm seeing guys who are dealing with erectile dysfunction at my age, like legitimate erectile okay. dysfunction. 
guys who are dealing with hypertension and all the guys who actually focused on the health fitness uh diet they all fine but even our bodies are like i'm a i'm a weight training i'm a sports guy i have injuries that i'm dealing yeah, with now yeah. so even after taking so much care of my health at some point your body begins to respond with some kind of injuries okay. it's just the process of aging as a man i'm sure even you I went through that yes, yes, like why do athletes retire exactly but my point is we don't have liver disease so what's happening in india where such intense problems are happening so yeah. is it correct to say that the number of patients you're getting is increasing um so i think uh, this question i'm going to take it in two ways sure. one is basically the landscape of liver disease in india sure. you know what at the moment what we are facing and uh, why is it so uh so the commonest uh, liver disease i still see in my outpatient is still alcohol related liver disease uh but it will be different in north india uh it'll be hepatitis b related liver disease in north india and uh, in punjab it might be hepatitis c and it's it all depends on various environment and other risk factors that are prevalent in these areas but if you look at any place be it south north east or west in india we can see there is one cause that is just climbing up and just shooting above everything and it will become the commonest cause in the next decade which is what exactly what we are speaking about is non alcoholic fatty liver because of lifestyle diseases because of metabolic diseases so the landscape is now changing from alcohol viral viral cause of liver disease to alcohol and now it is non alcoholic fatty liver that is more coming up in every parts of the country and uh, the reason why we are seeing this now is because one uh, we are detecting it early so previously uh, there was this i mean if you look at 25 30 years back there was this group of liver disease known as cryptogenic or idiopathic so people have shrunken livers or fissures cirrhosis and they did not know what this was due to shrunken liver yeah so when in advanced stages of liver disease in cirrhosis the liver shrinks and becomes small because the cells outside get yeah dead. no because all the cells inside get dead and is replaced by scar tissue so it becomes shrunken so that is the end stage of liver disease so uh, a lot of patients decades before they did not know why that was happening so they were not consuming alcohol they were not having hep- this viral hepatitis no viral viral infections were there so they used to call it as cryptogenic which is mysterious crypto means mysterious uh, idiopathic means unknown that is what the technically we use and uh, as the decades went by now we understood that you know lifestyle diseases and metabolic disease also can harm the liver and all of those cryptogenic causes idiopathic causes are now clubbed under non alcoholic fatty liver so the uh, improvements in uh, health technology and diagnostics has actually helped us understand non alcoholic fatty liver as an important cause for liver disease now because of which it is now getting detected very early even in younger group of people who have metabolic disease who have some lifestyle uh, you know changes that are unhealthy what would metabolic diseases include exactly like we spoke about before diabetes obesity um, a low thyroid function which is hypothyroidism Uh, high cholesterol and lipid profiles high uric acid presence of heart disease uh, lack of physical activity sedentary life overweight all of this become part of metabolic disease and you'd say that all these are partially due to genetic factors and then partially due to lifestyle exactly so there are genetic factors there are environmental factors there are epigenetic factors there are these factors that will affect you before you were born you know while you're inside your mother's womb there are factors that can affect you there which can actually promote Uh, fat liver disease or some disease liver disease in the future so even such factors are all there so it's not just one factor which is causing non alcoholic fat liver disease but many things that come together at that particular point but you said that you know you're seeing an increase of this one thing yeah. which is what we're talking about yeah. here there has to be a reason that in 2024 or the 2020s generally this one thing is increasing yeah. so we got to see what changed because effectively i would assume that the genetics of indians roughly would be the same now 20 years ago 40 years ago 60 years ago would be different right would be different because now uh, see it 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 all depends on uh, imagine that there was this particular family who were getting married in that only particular community in that particular region now they have moved to another place and they get married to people in another region where more of metabolic diseases are prevalent so they have a higher risk of developing metabolic disease now which it was not there before so all of these things matter right so human uh, migration uh, risk factors in the family within the family the environment that you are in for example it's very interesting thing is uh, there are certain occupations that 
promote fat liver disease for example people who work in night shifts so your normal biological clock is meant for you to sleep from this time to this time right so when night shifts come they have a disrupted sleep cycle and they don't get the actual good sleep that they need to get a lot of people get lower hours of sleep just that can promote fatty liver mm. so lack of sleep poor quality of sleep or a non restorative sleep you are sleeping but you don't feel fresh in the morning like you have not slept at all you sometimes you feel that i mean we all feel that so that non restorative sleep also can promote fatty liver it has nothing to do with your genetics or your environment or your family nothing mm. so there are so many such factors now yeah um you know i i actually want to get into this genetics conversation a little bit because there's a thing of dominant genes and submissive genes and we had mm-hmm. a genetic scientist on the show dr neeraj rai he spoke about basically how you shouldn't marry within the same community and mm-hmm. when you marry outside yeah. it's just genetically a healthier thing to do yeah and that's basic human biology that yeah that's that's something known as consensual marriages where you marry your relatives in the sense your first degree cousins or you know their second cousins and things like that and liver diseases do come with no, that kind of i'm i'm saying the opposite of that yeah if, if you if do you, if you do exact opposite it becomes better so the thing you said about migration i would assume that if someone is in say kerala for example yeah. then they move to assam yeah and uh, if they marry an assamese person shouldn't it actually help with the liver function so it depends on who i marrying so if you are marrying somebody who has imagine hepatitis b in the family you are okay. at a risk of developing hepatitis b okay or but, your children are at a risk of developing hepatitis b but if i marrying somebody who is healthier without hepatitis b without any other genetic diseases it's, it's fine great. it's fine yeah hey if you enjoyed today's clip make sure you check out all the other clips we've uploaded on this channel you'll find a clip related to almost every single topic as long as you're willing to search for it